then i figured that the sport of boxing in india has way too many politics in it mm. like way too much politics any sport in india for that matter yeah but in particular boxing in yeah. particular boxing like i remember i broke up with this one girl earlier this year and we were 5 years into our relationship and just because um, i was doing what i was doing yeah. she saw no direction in me and uh, didn't I, i i can't even blame her because she wanted something more from life she was a little older than i was so she yeah. wanted more from life i i said don't throw a head kick don't throw a head kick don't throw a head kick was the first fucking thing i do yeah. in the fight i threw a head kick <laughs> <laughs> and it caught him when did you start or did you like do boxing in school or oh yeah i mean i started boxing in school because i used to when i was 10 years old i used to get bullied like crazy okay. in school so there were a lot of these um So anybody that grew up in Pune knows bishops and marys and yeah. all these and, and, and all these schools now there's a culture of where boarders bully uh the day scholars and bishops yeah. quite a bit and I was a bit of a pansy I'm not going to lie I was a bit of a pansy so I was a I was an easy target and I was small and I was thin and I was frail yeah so I was a very easy target for these guys and they bullied me and I don't blame them but uh <laughs> I don't blame them man I was it's okay but uh no and then one day I went crying and I started complaining to my mom about oh. uh, you know what was happening and she said uh, you know okay fine I'm going to come speak to the principal tomorrow now that day she happened to be with her uncle who used to be a boxer in the merchant navy mm. so he said nothing doing you're coming to my house and we're going to train for a year so yeah. he had some old boxing gloves of his which he gave to me and we just trained for a year and he just taught me what the basics he just taught me what a jab was what a yeah. cross was a hook and an uppercut and how to mix it up and yeah. he held pads we didn't have pads so he just held pads with his hands and bichara was like 70 some 71 years old at the oh, time it's so like his hands class. were very very frail yeah. you're basically karate kid yeah essentially <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's mr miyagi he's parsi yeah. mr miyagi yeah. just that's so cool though yeah. uh yeah your you went to bishop so i think yeah and bishop so kalyan nagar boxing yeah bishop kalyan nagar had yeah, boxing that's yeah. so interesting mm-hmm. like for a school to have boxing as a sport i i love that it did and i tried to get into boxing a year earlier because i used to get bullied like i didn't and i didn't like it yeah. and the guy that i ended up facing in my first bout was coincidentally the guy that used to bully me quite a bit yeah yeah so i just found myself in the same weight class as him and my first fucking bout was against this guy and i got him out of then 30 seconds oh damn yeah so that was a big moment for me because that i and i never got bullied throughout my school life after that so yeah. it was pretty happy for me yeah after that yeah. you can't yeah. like the kids know yeah the kids know mm. and then they kind of stayed away and uh, that led to another problem i didn't have many friends in school so i had a yeah. lot of free time so i just kept training and getting better and getting better and getting better so before i knew it like i was 14 and i went for my first nationals i won my nationals uh and i don't know i just went from there then i figured that the sport of boxing in india has way too many politics in it mm. like way too much politics any sport in india for that matter yeah but in particular boxing in yeah. particular boxing because um It's again in the in the judges hands right eventually mm-hmm. so even if a guy is be- getting beaten get, getting beaten by you yeah the judges won't stop it or the referee won't stop it and they'll give him the decision yeah like there was i remember this one bout i fought against this one guy from haryana he just kept i just kept hitting him to the body head body head body head and, I, and then went on for three rounds and very decisively I won the fight quite decisively yeah. and still gave him the decision for whatever reason yeah. because so it's, yeah. it's like it's decided before that this guy is going to win yeah. so i thought fuck that i'm going to get into a new sport Yeah. started doing MMA and now why MMA came about was uh, because again I was in Bishop's camp for my junior college and uh, this one I'm not going to mention his name but he knows who he is he uh, he's and he's watching. probably watching yeah he's <laughs> probably watching yeah, and he showed up at my MMA class 5 years later and the look on his face was fucking priceless yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah no so and i guess you guys might even know him like he's quite he's quite a famous dude you can say the name I'll bleep uh, it no it's okay it's fine yeah. but um he had some political connections and mm. i was a little scared to take that on like when he slapped me he slapped me in front of the whole cafeteria yeah. so and i felt pretty helpless yeah. i would have done something to him but i just he knew i i knew that he had political connections yeah. and i knew that he's gone outside college to fuck people up even though he was a border at the point yeah he still had that pull with people in school right so i just didn't want to fuck with that and i felt pretty helpless so i started mma the very next day and i never looked back after oh, that damn. yeah and today here we are It's interesting that all your inspirations have been like from a place of pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a, yeah. that's how it yeah. usually is, right? Every lesson I've learned also, yeah. even when I went for my world championships and I got my ass handed to me by the guy from Russia, who eventually yeah. went on to win the world championships in my weight class. Uh, after that, I won my first national title, so that just drove me to do to do better. So yeah. every time I've every time I failed, every time something bad has happened to me, I've always felt like it's just set me up for something better and bigger. Yeah, right? so I don't take losses in a bad way. I don't dwell on losses anymore. I used to it used to break me quite a bit yeah. but I don't dwell on them anymore I uh, I always try and be very um 
objective with them. I try yeah. to look at it from a third person's point of view. I say, okay, how, what can I correct? Because I record all my fights. I see what went wrong. Yeah. Right. So I don't make those mistakes again, and I don't repeat a mistake again and again ever. Yeah. Well, that's how it should be. Yeah. I mean, th- that pain in itself, the, and this is like at the mm. ultimate level of pain where you're getting beaten up in front of. It's the highest highs and the lowest lows, man. Yeah. Unfortunately. You, You but that's what I signed up for, right? So yeah. that I have to accept the good with the bad that comes with it. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine putting in, I don't know, six months, seven months of my life mm-hmm. towards this one fight. And then you go, and then we see fights in the UFC, we see just mm-hmm. fights in general, like fights that end in 10 seconds. You're mm-hmm. like, man, this guy. Yeah. He's, and that's why I think so often fighters just break down after a fight. Just getting yeah. knocked out is like so emotional. Yeah. getting knocked out getting finished getting submitted or even losing by decision it's very it it breaks you in a way yeah because it's it's literally like a part of you dies when that happens yeah and it's not, it's not a very good thing but again it makes you it makes you it, you know how when you lift when you lift weights and your hands get calloused yeah. quite a yeah. bit kind of calluses your brain the same yeah. way right so yeah. you just learn to get tougher your brain just is is able to take more so when somebody says something to me now or when somebody does something i just yeah. don't i just go like okay fine cool i mean yeah. you have something bad to say about me i don't i really really couldn't give yeah. a shit right if what my parents think about me like and and even my parents initially because they told me to stop doing it and they told me like i had to battle a lot of that at home yeah. as well although they've supported me very very uh, how do i say this very un- i can't say unconditionally there's always been conditions like okay you know if you do this you get to compete if you do yeah. that you if you do well in your school in, in school also it was like that if you yeah. do well if you don't fail this term then you get to take part in boxing so it was always just chasing this carrot yeah. on the stick right so <coughs> uh but then that's You kind of have to be your own inspiration. You kind of have to be your own support at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So makes you tougher. With the parents thing, like I also get it to, like some extent. Like mm-hmm. parents can't support. Obviously. Everything yeah, like obviously. that. Whatever. Like what you said is probably the best thing parents can do by saying you do this, and you get to do, all all of this. Like, mm-hmm. uh, unconditional support is just yeah. I don't it's know. It's a fast like even yeah. e- even a term like unconditional love, unconditional yeah. this, unconditional that. Nothing's unconditional. Yeah. Everybody that has something important in their lives, everybody that wants to do something important in their lives, there's always a condition to it, right? Yeah. And you set those conditions with yourself as well, right? It's not like you love yourself unconditionally. You love yourself as long as you're doing things that you love doing. Yeah. There's you love points yourself. in your life where you don't love yourself. Yeah. I yeah. fucking hate yeah. myself yeah. most days <laughs> because I'm an idiot and <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying I'm the smartest person in the world, but yeah, you can uh, hit hit in the head so too many times. So I'm like, ah, "Fuck." And I hit <laughs> myself in the head after that and I'm like, "Ah, yeah, shit. It's okay." But yeah. yeah. Does that uh, that must be affecting you in some way, you know, just getting hit so many times. <sighs> so I felt that I got concussed twice in my okay. life, and that's not a good feeling because sometimes you know you, you look at uh, you look at a red light and kind of hurts your head. Oh. Yeah, even the red light on my TV one time, like I had to switch my to pull the plug from my TV and just the I had to pull the plug because the red light of the TV yeah. was affecting my head. And earlier this year, I felt I got concussed when I got caught in a choke in training, and the guy had big boxing gloves yeah. on, and I couldn't let go. Like normally, you can kind of like bump and slide yeah. out of it. And me being as stubborn as I am in training, oh, yeah. I learned not to be very stubborn in training. The guy caught me in a choke and just didn't let go, and I was a little stubborn with it. Eventually, I got out. Yeah. But I realized it was too late because he had cranked my neck three, four times, and it's not, it's not very, very good for your head. So yeah, it cuts yeah. the blood supply. And yeah, exactly. So, and then after that, it just one problem after another. Where, um, yeah, no. So we'll tell you about that later. Okay. But uh, yeah, so just yeah, 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 getting concussed gets quite. I feel like people, yeah. a lot of casual people who follow the sport, mm-hmm. they. maybe they don't think about all this like even in training mm-hmm. it is training but then at the end of the day you're if you're not going all in mm-hmm. then like are you like i don't i don't know enough but like even in training while you're sparring with someone there mm-hmm. must be times where you're just like no i have to go all in no, mm-hmm. it's like i can't just hold uh, back yes and no because uh, you know that your training partner is your responsibility mm. so i trained with this one guy shubham now again shubham very quiet guy very timid guy very yeah. uh, you know very to himself but a very uh, determined training partner very mm. determined fighter very tough guy too tough for his own good sometimes but yeah. good he's very very good now this guy and i initially had quite a bit of animosity because when we used to train at our old academy in camp uh, he was quite new at the time and he yeah. uh, he was he was this guy that had this in hindi this abail buddhi where mm. you just walk forward like a bull yeah. and you do nothing with it you, you you have no brains it's all brawn yeah. right so he just could he could take shots and keep walking forward like a zombie yeah and then used to spar very very hard and i got pissed with that because i usually take care of my sparring partners i don't try to hurt them so i'll keep the wrestling aspect or the grappling aspect of it quite heavy yeah just so that it feels like you're doing work yeah. and you also stay in that zone 
Well, and the kicks to the body them. and the the strikes to the body and the strikes to the legs also can be a little heavy like 60 70% yeah but the strikes to the head like your head is you, you have to preserve your head you have to preserve yeah. your brain right That's you can't you hit to knock people out yeah exactly yeah. and you can't do that in training yeah. now unfortunately at the time shubham didn't understand that because he just thought that okay fine i have to come in here and fuck everybody up and that's yeah. my day i explained that to him so i got very pissed with him one time and he punched me really really hard in the head so i kicked him in the head and i knocked him out and that was like there are certain roles in the gym that you fulfill like i was the gym enforcer so if somebody mm-hmm. was acting a little you know if somebody was acting up a little in training yeah. i'd be the one that's part with them and said okay chalo i'll put you in your place and i'll make you mm-hmm. understand but that took a little it, it mm-hmm. took a little bit of time like i had, i was 4 5 years into training at that point yeah but that happens mm-hmm. when when you are so dedicated and committed to something even if you're not like with when i go to play football mm-hmm. with my friends yeah. my closest friends yeah. there are times where we like we kick each other and then we're mad at each other that's yelling mm-hmm. and that's football which is in comparison to mma mm-hmm. like you have to beat the shit out of <laughs> exactly. each other yeah. and there's always going to be some sort of there's no ego in football there's a lot of ego i've noticed mm-hmm. like if somebody if if somebody is this solo player like you yeah. know you have like a uh, for lack of a better reference neymar of the yeah, group yeah. like you know he wants to stay se- stay selfish with the yeah. ball you know he doesn't want to pass the ball yeah. like i played football for a long time as well so i know that and i've been around these um, these big football teams training and i see i see you see there's little egos forming yeah. in mma you can't have that you're by yourself sorry you're by yourself in mma when you're fighting in a cage in you in the cage you're by yourself yeah. in a fight i'm talking about training i'm talking about yeah. in that gym environment okay okay in that gym environment if you have an ego there's no place for you over there yeah and you see a guy like Colby Covington just because he had a problem with everybody in his gym mm-hmm. now that whole uh if for, for for people who don't know he puts on this whole uh Trump MAGA yeah, act yeah. where he's just got this very WWE style persona yeah. but outside he's a very very nice guy very respectful guy but again because of his antics he's made a lot of enemies mm-hmm. and he just done what he had to to get ahead and yeah. right so my original point with it was that um if you have an ego and if you have too much uh you know if you think you're flying a little too high there's no place for you in a in uh, in, a, in in a gym environment where you do have to work with a team yeah right because you have to be able to take care of your training partner so that they can show up the next day and be that support system for you yeah. right now yeah. this time from my gym i'm the only one no there's one more guy going with me who's who owns the gym his name is mudassar right so i've not tried to hurt anybody in the gym this time i've mm. not tried to i mean i never do but i also know that if i hurt somebody that guy's not going to be able to he's not going to be able to train for 3 days that guy knows yeah. that if i'm not if he hurts me i'm not going to be able to i'm not going to be able to train for a week yeah. because i have a fight coming up so i have to rest whatever's hurt that much more we are taking care of each other exactly. everyone so there's no teamers. egos and those and and you leave your shoes and your ego at the same place you leave them yeah. at the door right yeah. so if you have an ego about yourself you keep that outside the gym yeah at the gym mm-hmm. you're there to study you're mm-hmm. there to learn exactly and that's All and sometimes is. when you leave the gym you forget to pick up that ego so it just goes away one yeah. day right and pick pick it up on your way out yeah you need i feel like you need to have that if like i said you're putting yourself in a spot where you could get knocked out in front of people in front of thousands of people mm-hmm. there's no place for an ego that what do you want to do with an ego that's why a lot of times when i'm watching mma fights there's been times that i've been like really emotional after a fight where i see maybe the fighters who have lost with their families and it's yeah. just a, it's heartbreaking but then at the same time you know this is their life mm-hmm. i feel like people don't appreciate that enough mma has slowly become like my favorite sport to watch <laughs> yeah. Uh, ever since the first lockdown where sports were like everything was mm-hmm. cancelled i think ufc was the only thing that was on they s- decided to do it without o- an audience yeah. i was like man this is like this mm. is something else i love football i've been mm-hmm. watching football since i've yeah. been like 4 years old yeah. but like with mma you have that connection yeah which i don't think you'll ever have with any other sport it's just Yeah, but I don't blame people for not understanding what the fighters go through because they don't unless you know a fighter, unless you are a fighter, you mm-hmm. don't understand what's going into it. Today my family understands what I have to go through. Yeah. Today my mom came up to the terrace and saw me dying trying to make weight. Yeah. So she understands what goes into it. So she knows that okay, fine, I have to leave this Chutia alone. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because he's going to snap at anybody. Yeah. Right? Until I had a sip of water, until I had uh until I have some food in my system. Yeah. Right. Uh even relationship wise like fighters they deal with a lot outside Like I remember I broke up with this one girl earlier this year and we were 5 years into our relationship and just because I'm I was doing what I was doing yeah. she saw no direction in me yeah. and uh, didn't I, I I can't even blame her because she wanted something more from life she was mm-hmm. a little older than I was so she yeah. wanted more from life and she's 
she came from a family that was pressuring her to get married and shit so yeah yeah i i, I get where she was coming from so i get after 5 years why she would think that and abruptly get up and leave yeah. so and honestly i was happy for her because she was much happier later and today mm-hmm. i'm happier too because i get to do what i have to do freely and yeah. i'm with somebody new who understands what i do yeah and then you don't have that yeah. at the back of your head yeah that though comes with anything man even, yeah. even uh, for me like when i'm con- now constantly i can't switch yeah. this now when i'm making content i can't switch it off i assume like mm-hmm. it's the same with you if i'm out with my friends i'm always thinking who's the next guest to mm-hmm. get on what are we going to talk yeah. about it's I'm, an obsession uh, yeah i've started yeah. doing stand up comedy so you I, have yeah, so i'm so a huge fan of stand up every time yeah. like everything that happens i'm thinking of the next joke next mm-hmm. joke to write yeah. so like then you're absent a lot of times right. with people and then it affects you it affects people and then you have to learn how to switch that off right. otherwise like even on a very small level you feel it and it really ruins your relationships yeah so yeah and there's no place for people that don't understand what you have to go through right yeah and if you, and 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 if they do have that place in your life you kind of fight for them you kind of make them understand yeah. but if they don't understand and they still decide to distance themselves from you fine it's there it's their prerogative you can't you can't only, possibly fight to keep them in your lives against their will right you can't hold them hostage to your dreams yeah there's only so much you can do and um mm-hmm. uh, yeah i mean when you're committed to something it does get lonely it does, uh, of you course you can't expect people to understand what you're so hungry mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. maybe and a lot of times like you assume that everyone else is also working towards something so a lot of people aren't a lot mm-hmm. of people are just living that life exactly. they want chill they want to that's not thinking about too much like i don't i don't i don't understand this people oh, are so yeah. content just <laughs> fucking being like they're, 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 they're not they're not striving for anything yeah, it's too i see here. Yeah, it's i too see nice. so many people that are just existing that are just okay fine I'm, i do this at 9 o'clock do this at 1 o'clock i jog off at 4 o'clock and i come home yeah. and i eat my dinner and i go to sleep yeah that's it i just i, I don't understand that i can't i, I just can't yeah so I, even, it pisses mm-hmm. me off also and yeah. then now i've realized like, not yeah. everyone is trying to do something like exactly. some people like when i when i go out every once in a while now mm-hmm. i see people i'm like man i see you here every time mm-hmm. i'm here <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. like oh, like a high spirit yeah, yeah, like, yeah what, like what are you doing but then mm-hmm. it's not my place to No, it's yeah. just it only pisses me off when I see someone with potential. I'm like, yeah. man, what are you doing with your life? Like, pisses me off when I see them be smug about it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And for me, it's like I don't have an ego in a lot of ways. And until my feelings are hurt or until something yeah. like that happens, like and for people that don't know, like they fighters are not guys with fighters are not guys and girls with like bulletproof brains and shit. Yeah. We don't feel anything. Like we feel a lot yeah. more. We just are good at keeping it under wraps. Yeah. Right? because we have to kind of switch that on and off because you have to exist in this world yeah. you can't just go around kicking and choking people out right yeah. you have to exist as a normal human being you have to have a backup you have to yeah. have an education and there's one thing that i'm glad my parents forced me to do is have an education and have a backup yeah right because i don't understand what i'm going to do after fight uh, after fighting right now unless i get into athlete management which is also a direction that i really really want to move mm-hmm. in even now alongside fighting yeah. but again it's a job on its own like it's it, a, that's in the background like you're the it is yeah. it is and fighting just takes up so much head space so you kind of learn how to time manage and shit but yeah. and you don't see that in a lot of people around you and when you don't see that in people around you you don't want to keep those people around you want to keep people around who understand and who have that same fucking drive yeah yeah you don't want ha- you don't want to have people that are this 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 ball and chain that keep you in the same yeah, place yeah but the but sub- support systems are important mm. in any field that yeah. you're doing you just need cool people and people exactly. who understand you yeah. around you yeah. with but with i i like how you start talking about like having a backup because yeah. you like sports in india in general like that unless mm. you're this amazing cricketer yeah. i don't know <laughs> like, <laughs> or golf golf yeah. i don't know enough about golf but mm. i think there is money in it because yeah. there's a lot of competitions There's money and there's money in it because there's people who do it with money. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, so it's yeah. kind of like everybody just it's just paying for itself. Yeah. 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 There's no loss. There's only like a steady pay so there's profit, nothing else. But then now with just being a fighter even abroad, I'm sure it's so much better than here but unless you're one of these big guys like how much how much are the guys who are on the uh like undercard Mm-hmm. making how much like in the preliminaries the fighters who are fighting the stuff that's not even telecasted exactly like how much are they making so It's ufc fighter has a contract of a minimum of uh, if they lose they get $10,000 and if they win they get $30,000 that's their mm-hmm. base contract that is not including bonuses like yeah. if you get a fight of the night bonus or if you get uh, you know knockout of the night or you yeah. get uh, you know submission of the night or something like that yeah 
or uh, performance of the night so right. if you have two fighters that just gotten a fucking battle with each other and it it made everybody go yeah. oh shit it yeah. made tv it ratings go up yeah, yeah. If, if it was just entertaining and the whole and you know the crowd was into it yeah they they vote on which fight was the best right so there are some cards where there's just so many exceptional fights that just give bonuses to everybody yeah but you seldom get that right yeah. you, you 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 can't have fireworks every single time yeah uh those guys so so they do have a base salary of about $30,000 when they win the fight and uh, $10,000 when they lose the fight but that's still a lot of fucking money yeah but that's a lot but of fucking money before here. taxes before taxes and here it's a lot yeah. over there it's just salary yeah, exactly like, yeah Some people get ten thousand dollars a month, and they don't, they they can't, uh, they can't buy toilet paper afterwards. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And how how the thing is, you can't fight every month. You can't. Yeah. Like if you have a bad fight, you may be out for mm-hmm. months, and then what? And then your sponsors leave you. You lose endorsements because yeah. you you're bad for their image at that point after losing. Yeah. And right. that's what I'm gonna bring up Jake Paul now because he ah, said. Go ahead, man. Uh, he he said. I dig that guy. Like I said, said a lot of bad stuff. He said something interesting. Yeah. yeah. Like this whole new thing, new. Yeah. think he's doing about fighters need to get paid more mm-hmm. is really cool because it does make a lot of mm-hmm. sense to but then at the same time I understand with people like Dana why they're trying to make money at the end of the day and people are you need to have a personality mm-hmm. to sell fights you yeah, obviously to, like you look at Conor you look at even Colby you mentioned mm-hmm. them they're doing this because they have to be yeah. these people yeah. like They have Even to be this person. Someone like Masvidal, right? Yeah, true. He, he keeps losing. Yeah. But then he he is just people love him because mm-hmm. of how he carries mm-hmm. himself and the whole persona he's yeah. created. And the Ben Askren knee. So yeah, yeah. yeah that <laughs> was so that that was the most decisive way to win a fight and shut somebody up. Honestly, like he knocked him the fuck out cold, which yeah, which like, got the vice towards the sport. We're not going to fight. I'm gonna come here. You're mm-hmm. gonna come here. I'll mm-hmm. knock you out, and it's done. Yeah, that's it. Six seconds, and it was done. But no, about Jake Paul. Um, I said a lot of shit about Jake Paul because of what he said about Conor McGregor's wife. Yeah. Right. Like she's a four. You can do better. Yeah. I don't like. I don't like hearing that. Yeah. But then. Uh, Conor, but then. You saw him. Yeah, he was just he was just ice cold about it, dude. He was just ice cold. Yeah, but then he, he also went on with like Dustin's wife, so it's just. He like, did. So I mean, what goes around comes around, yeah. and Conor got fucked for that. Yeah. So. I get that, but uh, in terms of what Jake Paul is doing for these fighters, now now not a lot of people see it, and I respect the fuck out of Jake Paul for taking these fights, yeah. taking these risks because this fucker doesn't have to do it. Like every yeah. fight he's fighting, he's fighting almost every six months now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he's just earning a shitload of money. Yeah. More than he ever did with Disney, more than he ever did with any of the movies, YouTube, anything that he yeah. more, more than he's ever done, and. He's getting these fighters paid, so he's getting eyes on the sport of MMA. He's getting eyes on the sport of boxing, and everybody that is that is on that card is getting paid that much more, but just because yeah. of the amount of pay per view buys. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it, because a yeah. lot of people look at it. They're like, "Oh, he's, uh, this is like he's a a shameful. Yeah. No, this is shameful for the sport. Like, I did look at what honestly, boxing yeah. has yeah. gone to. But then, look, man. First of all, these two brothers, they're mm. so smart. They're yeah. like. genius marketing geniuses yeah. everything that they do mm-hmm. and you have to respect them because they they were like two kids from nothing yeah, they've just true. they were just like oh, we're going to make content mm-hmm. we're going to be entertainers and this yeah. is all we can someone like Jake Paul he knows everyone hates him mm-hmm. and he's like leaning into that but yeah. that's also a very conscious effort he's like I'm going to piss people off to the point that they want to see me to get pissed off. But people are always going to say something about you regardless of you being a good person or a bad person. Yeah. So might as well do what sells, might as well what gets you the money, might as well what might as well do what gets you that sort of fame. Yeah. Right. And if his if his goal is something, he has to push everything out of the yeah. side walking to that one goal. Right. Yeah. His goal just now is getting fighters paid. He has an anti-bullying um or a I I I don't know what it's called but for people he used to get he used to be a bully yeah, when he was yeah. younger. and then people started bullying him online and shit and he felt bad about that yeah. so these kids that were bullying victims he used to um he sorry he has a boxing academy for them where he teaches them boxing yeah. i don't know if him teaching people boxing is a good thing or a bad <laughs> thing but uh, well, he's not the bad, effort bro. is bro. Bad. he's not bad he's not bad at all yeah. he's not bad at all i mean yeah. he went fucking how many rounds did he go with tyron woodley how many rounds of the fight was that there was an eight round fight yeah, i bet I on that know. fight i don't know but he, he went the distance with tyron woodley and beat him on points yeah. <laughs> beat him on points i can't say he did but um I I I didn't watch the fight. I didn't watch the highlights either. Yeah. But I know for a fact that he didn't do well enough to beat him. Yeah. 
but well, uh, i'm not shitting on his boxing i'm not shitting on him i'm just shitting on the fact that okay fine boxing is rigged yeah very obviously for sure the, yeah. but the thing with him is like if he loses a fight it's done that's so not it's, his, it's one and done, done for him right uh, he's not going to come back and fight he wins if he fights conor mcgregor next you can imagine the kind of headlines that's going to make yeah, right well, and conor needs the biggest that fight at this point <laughs> yeah exactly he's a prize fighter yeah. right that's his job he's a prize fighter he's not a fighter he's not yeah. a boxer he's not anything he's yeah. a prize fighter he's, he's fighting for money he's fighting for fame and as long as he's doing that as long as he's getting what the fuck he needs to who cares about what anybody else thinks yeah, at the right? end of the my day my opinion doesn't matter your opinion doesn't matter everyone is fucking entertained at yeah. the end yeah. like every, everyone wins in this like it's there's no losers losers are just probably people like well how much are they losing like mm-hmm. ben askren like no one expected anything he had a smile on his face yeah. he just got paid 20 million dollars for yeah. for a fight that he that that that, that lasted less than one round that's the yeah. easiest 20 million dollars he's made in his life where is ben askren right now yeah people started Enjoying talking about him again for a while so that was all good for him exactly and then, and then you get endorsements from here you get yeah. sponsors from there you get money coming in from various different places and it's just everything just comes together in a good yeah. way even if it has to fall apart it still falls into place after that yeah But right. you think he'll fight Conor because Conor Oh, I want uh, to see that. Like whether he does or he doesn't, <laughs> I want to see that. If he's under contract with UFC then it's difficult. It is. It is. Unless they make an exception involved. for the Floyd fight as yeah, well, right? So, so I think Dana will yeah. make an exception yeah. for this also cuz he mm. likes money at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, he does. He gets yeah. a big cut if that fight. Yeah, does exactly. Happen. Now Tyron Woodley got cut from the UFC and then he took this fight so that was no yeah, problem yeah. for him he to was do that under right. contract. and people love him and people know exactly who he is people know exactly what he's done yeah so it's nice i like i i like seeing everybody doing well and i like seeing everybody winning yeah. even if people are losing they're still fucking winning right yeah. as long as they're making headlines they're winning yeah even bad news is news yeah. right what what do you think like your Do you want to have this persona at the end of the day? Me? Like, no, I'm very quiet, man. Like if you look at Dustin Poirier and you look at me, yeah. like I want to be a family man, dude. I don't Yeah. I want to I want to be a prize fighter, but I also want to do good for this world. Like I want mm-hmm. to come back and give back to the Indian MMA community. Yeah. So when if and when I do make it to the top, which I plan on doing, which is what I'm training for, whatever money I do earn, I also want to open up a charity. I also want to open up a charity for fighters and athletes in general in India that mm-hmm. can't afford the training, that can't afford the the facilities. Yeah. Then I want to get into athlete management and I want to um I just want to be a dad and I want to be a good husband to somebody. <laughs> That's all I want to do. I just want to be a dad to a, to a, to a daughter, show yeah. what it's like to be respected and just live with one person. That's it. That is interesting. That's all I want to do. Someone man. like your age saying that yeah. because from what I've seen with people right now yeah. it's just that uh no one wants to get married anymore no one yeah. wants to everyone does mm-hmm. in the hand like yeah. everyone they do whether they want to or they don't yeah you're yeah. we're in india for everyone's going to get married it's just that everyone's so against this but i don't blame them also like you mm-hmm. you look at their families and you're like yeah man mm-hmm. i don't blame you yeah. I, I, you look at their parents <laughs> and i'm like oh, there's no way you're ever want yeah. going to want to get married yeah but then it's interesting yeah. that you're so like no this is what i want I'm very clear about what I want and I don't want in life. Like mm-hmm. I I see happiness if I see happiness around me or if, yeah. even if I see sadness around me I want to turn that into happiness. I don't just because I see somebody's parents or I see you know uh, I see friction in my own family sometimes it doesn't mean I don't want good for myself. It doesn't mean I can't be that change. Yeah. Right. So for me also like I was in this long term relationship right. I was in this relationship for 5 years mm-hmm. so I figured what I wanted in life. So even yeah. when I did choose to be with somebody again now it was not i'm not not in this relationship now to be just to fuck around like yeah. i had that fucking around phase after yeah. i broke up i was a good Everyone two months does. it was a good <laughs> it was a fun two months but uh, again it, i wasn't happy right i wasn't yeah. happy because again small things like you don't have a person to say good morning to in the morning yeah. you don't have a person to be you you don't have a person to roll over and look at and look at yeah. and smile you don't i know i sound very uh, uh, i know well, i sound very uh, sappy but um, but this is this is the problem just, no guys are like this usually no one wants to admit it i like, not again i'm not that i don't have an, i don't, I don't have have any uh, reservations on how yeah. i should be on i should be like a guy i should be like whatever uh the definition of a man is not fucking around with different different women the d- definition of a man is stepping up when he needs to mm. right and that's what fighting taught me yeah. just because i'm getting these big fights or just because i'm getting fame or whatever i'm getting a few extra followers that doesn't yeah. matter to me when i have yeah. to step up and i step up and i fight that's what matters to me that's yeah. my goal right so if one day when i do have a family stepping up for that family is what determines my future with them yeah. and what determines my kids future eventually right yeah. and that's what i want to live for have you watched south park yeah i watched yeah. south park yeah, by the way yeah that is also yeah. a cool movie where it's it shows like yeah. uh how being a fighter affects your family and mm-hmm. 
uh, was yeah. quite interesting like i said highest highs and lowest lows man yeah. everybody suffers and everybody wins with you yeah but then when you win everybody's your fucking cousin your friend your <laughs> yeah. school your school friend i oh we used, we used to know each other when we went for one dance class together when you were five yeah you remember me i said okay cool dude thank you so much like and yeah. i got i've gotten some messages where people are just reaching out when i'm winning and nobody reaches out when i lose nobody says um i can't say nobody but not a lot of a lot of yeah. people yeah, a lot of people are just very quick to judge after but then that. with that also i understand like, where they're yeah, coming from it's, so it's it's cool it's fun to con- congratulate mm-hmm. someone it's mm-hmm. not fun to say hey man mm-hmm. i'm sorry mm-hmm. it's not it's yeah. not a fun conversation to it's have not. and yeah. they don't even know if it's going to help you yeah so they're like what if i say that and then mm-hmm. it's just rubbing it in yeah. even more so yeah. no, it's okay see uh showing support doesn't necessarily mean uh saying i'm sorry that you lost yeah. or whatever showing your support is standing by this person that you that you so uh you so willingly supported at one yeah. point and not talking shit about them because there were people that mm-hmm. that they that, that 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 shit flips around fast yeah like people that supported you say oh yeah i know i knew he was just a hype train i knew yeah. i knew it was just a hype train that sort of stopped at its station right yeah and that's all it is yeah man you right. just send the text saying hey then you'll get the next one it's fine you know? just don't even have to do that just don't, don't talk just shit don't talk shit <laughs> yeah yeah hiding behind a fucking computer screen or a phone screen or whatever and talking shit and anybody can be an instagram fighter right yeah yeah anybody can be an instagram troller or anything like that and i get i get messages all the time i just i've learned to laugh at it like yeah. it, it never affected me but i just fucking learned to laugh What at it because it's of kind of funny like people are like oh, i have to i can't make this shit up i have to read this out to you man because honestly yeah. if you're going to think i'm making it up okay so there was this one but guy. you you do get messages so it's oh, just I random yeah, you don't comment and it's quite funny man honestly if um if i were to if i were to show you every single message that i've gotten you probably we could probably make a scrapbook out of it okay is one guy I'm not going to say the name but he was like I don't like you <laughs> but that was a flawless KO but <laughs> like professional no brawl great performance and I still don't like you but I respect you because of your skilled but that because of your skilled <laughs> keep going fire emoji but that is I'm a like sweet message it's a sweet message yeah. but I don't like you I don't like you I don't like you I'm like okay cool I mean thank you it's a little bit of a mixed <laughs> message but yeah That's even sweeter mm. no if like someone doesn't <laughs> like you but you're like hey man could, it's okay i mean i appreciate i put his ego aside for fuck you fuck that man i mean even if even if somebody talks shit to me i really like it yeah. i don't know i just kind of pushes me yeah, yeah. do you mm. do you know exactly who you're fighting now in this i know a lot of people in my weight class because it's kind of see mma is a very small community mm. in india right so it's become almost like a fraternity of just us uh, yeah. male fighters right i say male because even the female has a featherweight division yeah. now so which is very good because they only had uh, f- they only had a division up to like flyweight for women yeah. so uh, up to 56 kilos for women but now they've got more weight classes for women so yeah. more women can take part that there's one fighter in one fc who's ritu fogat yeah yeah ritu fogat man she's yeah. she's i don't know she's like the fucking queen of india man honestly yeah. at this point if she wins a world championship at one championship i don't see a reason as to why she shouldn't go to the ufc so this girl that she just beat today or yesterday i don't know when it was she uh, that girl beat jang weili who's the former ufc oh, champion wow. Yeah, right, former know. UFC strawweight champion so exactly so well, maybe we could see her right yeah. here I don't see a reason as to why she's not yeah. in the UFC already but it'll be so big for UFC itself mm-hmm. to have an Indian fighter exactly it makes so no, much sense no we had one fighter already his name is Bharat Kandari yeah. but i think he got into the UFC a little late so he lost to uh, a person fighting out of team alpha male now his name is song yadong he's from china yeah and song was about 19 at the time when he knocked out i see choked out bharat kandari so he threw an overhand right knocked him down and then bharat like sort of um, panic pro- uh, sorry panic uh, panic shot at him for a takedown yeah. he just got choked out so yeah. yeah there was a chance where bharat could have gone to the ufc at a at a at an earlier point in his career when he was more young and able but unfortunately indian he mma was politics past his prime past yeah. his prime and politics just held him back to like the people that were managing him at that point didn't want him to go to the ufc they wanted to uh, further their agenda with him hmm. yeah they were just like no you're not going you're trying to further us a little more and this guy had the potential he was training at uh, jackson wing academy yeah. where john jones trains aaron yeah. pico trains holly home all these you know all the all these stars train he was training over there at the time and he was running through he was running through every opponent that he had at that point but uh, he, they just didn't let him go to the ufc because they wanted to further their agenda the ufc offered him uh-huh. a contract twice but he just they they just rejected it yeah, those pol- politics are my stuff it's everywhere and mostly in third world countries with yeah. sports there's a yeah. lot of politics i see it in even my home country iran mm-hmm. it's just yeah. with football like yeah. every time yeah, there exactly. is something new even in india man like mm-hmm. there's so much shit that goes on and then 
क्रिकेट इज प्रॉब्ली द ओनली स्पोर्ट दैट आई इन द फॉरसीएबल फ्यूचर आई थिंक इज गोइंग टू बी आर एंड ऑल बी ऑल मीन सोर्स ऑफ इनकम एंड रेवेन्यू बिकॉज एज लॉन्ग एज दस मनी एवरी वन है सो मनी इन्वेस्टर्स इन द स्पोर्ट ऑफ क्रिकेट दो मनी पीपल दैट सी पोटेंशियल इन क्रिकेट विच इज वाई द इंडियन क्रिकेट टीम डज सो वेल इफ पीपल सो बियॉन्ड दर फैट बेलीज एट दैट पॉइंट I don't mean to fat shame, but it's for for lack of a better term. Yeah. If somebody could look beyond their fat belly at that point, uh, they could understand that there is potential in every other sport in this country. Yeah. Like you take a sport like wrestling for for, for instance. You know, oh, you yeah. guys, you guys have you, you have guys like Bajrang Punia. You guys, you, I mean, we have guys like we have girls also like Vinesh Fogat, Ritu Fogat when she was into wrestling, Sangeeta Babita Fogat. Yeah. All these all these brilliant wrestlers that we've had from India. You have. Sushil Kumar also back in the day. I'm sorry, I'm naming so many names, yeah. but uh, it's yeah. good too. We have to name them, and exactly, yeah. and th- it just proves that there's so many people, but yeah. there's just such little eyes on them. There's just there's just so few eyes on it's them. It's every four years, and that's only if you yeah. win. And you get a month of marketing. You get yeah. a month of Hindustan Times or yeah. Times of India space on that newspaper, and then people have forgotten about you it's again until the next right. four years. Exactly. And if you don't win, no one talks about you. If you exactly. don't get a medal, it's nothing. Yeah. It's as exactly. if like these. Yeah. Oh yes, then Mary Com for boxing, dude. Yeah. I mean, that woman was revol- revolutionary for the for the for the world of women's combat. Yeah, right. For women in general in India to do sports at that point, so because she yeah. came from a time where women were not allowed to do sports or were not yeah. looked at well to do sports, right? They said, no, go go to the kitchen, go get a job, go do this, go do that. Yeah. Sports. Go was, get a job is still very progressive. Go get a job <laughs> is progressive, <laughs> but um, imagine again, it's like go get a job as what like yeah. i'm not, I'm not the, the, there's dignity in every single job yeah. i believe like yeah. there's i as long as work you're is work, yourself work is work for me man like i don't I, i don't take shame in what i don't take shame in what i've done like i have fucking cleaned my office bathroom for mm. my for my mom and our cleaners didn't come so i yeah. have like zero ego that way like it's yeah. it's, it's my it's my space i'm going to keep it clean and I, i don't see shame in that i'm just saying that people with potential who do have the potential to do more are told to do smaller things yeah right yeah and the people that do have the ten- the mental tenacity to to fight through that is what everybody should be doing yeah right? not settle for less of yeah. course there's people that do want to exist at the bottom there's people that do want to exist somewhere in the middle and get lost in a crowd yeah there's also people that want are born to stand out right and those people are often held back by these people who say it's unsafe to do that yeah but then the people who make it are the people who went against all of that and exactly so you need to want it enough to go against you need to be able it. to do it yeah right Today, if my parents tell me "fuck off," you're cut off completely. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna have my hands tied. I'm yeah. I have to figure out ways. I'm gonna have to take a step back for a few months and fi- find my find my ways to earn money and support my yeah. lifestyle. You're gonna have to be right. by yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So this upcoming fight, you said you don't know specifically who you're fighting mm. yet, right? I know who all are going to be in my weight class. I don't know who's gonna be my first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth fight. I don't okay. know that. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know that. But like, are you? Prep- it's next week, no? Next week, yeah. No, are you like prepared now? Are Dude, like- I'm more prepared than I've ever been. Like after what happened earlier this year, at one point, like I I fought my first nationals. I went up a weight class for no reason because I I just I, my health was bad at the point and mm-hmm. I couldn't cut weight. And I was popping combi flams right before my fight because yeah. I was just I was sick. I had a cyst growing over here. Uh, oh no! Because of uh, it was a stress related thing. So I had to get it surgically removed after a certain point, but I didn't know it was forming. Yeah. So it gave me an immense amount of body ache, and it gave me an immense amount of uh, fever. Yeah. And I got COVID tested like three times at that time, and I tested negative each time. And I was convinced I had COVID, but the stubborn asshole that I was at that point, I just, just I decided, assist. yeah, I was just I insisted on going, and I was I insisted on just participating. Yeah. And I hoped I lost, so I had to go. I I, I hoped I lost, so I had to go home early. Yeah. And so I, did, I just wasn't myself at that point, and I never spoke about it until now because I never wanted people to think I'm making an excuse for why I lost. Yeah. Again, the guy that beat me did what he had to do. Yeah. He showed up. He made weight. He did everything he had to do and more to to be able to fight me and yeah. to be able to step in there and fight. And it's okay. I mean, I've I've always taken responsibility for my losses, right? Because at the end of the day, even when you win, it's your responsibility. Yeah. As many as many times as people as many people want to say that they support you and they love you and everything, you know that it's your win. Yeah. Right. People very quickly don't support you when you lose. Yeah. And I saw that. Yeah. So it's fine. I mean, now with this fight coming up next week, I'm back to my original weight class at featherweight, and I'm feeling great. Like even now, you you see me talking and not feeling very low or anything yeah. like that, just because I've kept my nutrition in check. I've kept no, my training like in check. You seem like you're very positive. You're very. It's like you're waiting for this fight, and you just want. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just. I'm. I'm on a spring, and I'm waiting yeah, for fucking jumpers. Yeah, you're chilling. Jump you're as, having a. 
I'm see. having a good time. Like I learned to enjoy the process. At that yeah. point, I hated the process because it was just so agonizing and painful, yeah. and that was my downfall. Away, it's just that. It's mm-hmm. there's nothing else to, and it's just you yeah. preparing for this That's fight. It. That's it. That's it. And I'm so happy that I get to do this. You know, yeah. it's a privilege to be able to get up and have your body be healthy and have your body be able to get up and train and fight the next day. Yeah. Right. Because so many people can't do that. So many people have missing arms, missing legs, missing. uh parts of their brains and you just have to be thankful for what you have oh yeah every day for sure every day so when you know so when i wake up in the morning every day i'm just thankful i'm not yeah. a very religious person but i am very very thankful for everything that i have in my life yeah and my the fact that i'm able to yeah my Sorry. parents always they like made sure we knew that it's a privilege to be fully physically healthy not to have any mm-hmm. mental problems not to have any physical mm-hmm. disabilities yeah. it's just you if you have that you've made it like yeah. that's all you need because yeah. you see these people yeah. and then you can't imagine how you would live like 10 minutes yeah in like their shoes obviously not i mean i went to a blind school one time yeah also. dude i can't imagine how it is to not look at shit yeah. i can't imagine how it is to not be able to see stuff yeah right because you see everything around you, you see colors you see buddha you see this tv yeah. screen you're fascinated with everything you yeah. uh, this this privilege that you have of being on your phone all the time right yeah. some people don't get to have that i went to um so my granddad does a lot of charitable work with the lions club mm. he's president of the lions club so he has to be at every single um, every single camp so he treats i mean he helps treats kids with uh, you know eye problems uh, cerebral palsy uh, yeah what else physical disabilities like that and i can't imagine what it what it is to have a physical disability yeah. because you just feel trapped in your own body at that point yeah. i feel that a little bit when i have an injury and i can't train for a few mm. days or i can't train That's for a few a months it's debilitating and it's paralyzing yeah. right you can't you can't take advantage of the you can't um, not accept the fact that something bad might happen to you one day yeah. so even with this fight now the fact that i'm so comfortable with this is i've accepted the fact that i might lose i've accepted the fight and i've also accepted the fact that it can be the biggest win of my life yeah. right So you have to kind of exist somewhere in the middle because if you're leaning towards this, you're going to be very disappointed if you've come this way, right? Or you've yeah. lost, and you'll be devastated, yeah. and you won't. And it'll be that much harder to come back to the winning to, to your winning ways. So existing here makes it easier to come back to your winning ways, mm. right? So when you're neutral, so even before a fight, I'm never nervous and I'm never excited. I'm always okay. very very neutral. I accept that anything can happen. You so must be a little excited. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> nervousness so what i do is i take one day in my training camp now i'm going to let the secret out for everybody and this is what i think i think this is what everybody should do if they yeah. are preparing for something yeah. i don't fight my feelings i fucking feel them dude like if i want to yeah. puke i go puke i stick my finger on my throat and yeah. i puke yeah. if i if i'm getting nervous if i want to cry i i lock myself in my room and i cry yeah i do what i have to do to get all those feelings out so during training camp when i shouldn't be feeling any of this i don't feel it yeah on fight night i don't feel it Right on fight night, all this nervousness, all this anger, pain, doubt, everything comes out. Yeah, it's done right? with the. I'm done with yeah. feelings now. Now it's you time deal with to it, fight. Move on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that you can do that with. You can do that with anything in life. Honestly, I don't understand how people are so okay existing in that in that pain. Yeah. I'm not saying feel that pain for days and days and days. I'm saying yeah. feel it. Don't don't fight it. You. The only reason you're feeling it for so many days is because you're fighting it to a certain extent. Mm. Right. That pain can leave you in two hours. Yeah. That pain can leave you in two days. It's fine to yeah. take two days for that. But just feel it. Don't fight it. Yeah. Right. But it's important to also not like discredit people who have like actual I'm mental. Not, I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm saying yeah. like because it. I don't want anyone to see this and be like, oh, it's easy for you to say. But then Very easy for me to say because I, I don't understand yeah, that. Yeah. Once yeah. you like for people who have like it's a chemical imbalance, yeah. right? So once mm-hmm. you have that, uh, the people who are under like mm-hmm. actual treatment who are yeah. taking pills, mm-hmm. for them. I don't I don't know maybe for at the beginning if you stop resisting those feelings and yeah. fighting it you mm-hmm. won't get to an extreme yeah. but then once you're at that extreme I don't think like there's no coming back from that right anything you can do to yeah. help it yeah right so that that's where professional help comes into play and people yeah. are so in a country like India also if you're getting professional help yeah now I have a friend who studying in the US at, right right now at this point and um so he came out like he's gay I'm not going to mention his yeah. name because I don't think his family should be watching this yeah. but but still like i'm not going to mention his name he um he came out uh, he came out as a gay guy and he's very happy after he came out yeah. right and the fact that i see him so happy like he was very sad as a kid like i'm i can't yeah. say he was sad he was just being sort of fake positive at that point hmm. but he was so not himself and then when yeah. he came out and he he went to he went to singapore he went to america to study 
he just came out and i see a completely different person i see such a confident such a such a nice person yeah. right although he's a little bougie yeah. i love the fact that he is and he is who he is and he's and you know we've been friends since we were kids yeah. i see that and i just see okay fuck man this guy's really really happy you kind of have to be happy yeah. for that and i don't say i have to in a bad way i say fuck i don't want to be i don't want this guy to ever feel sad again i don't want this guy to ever feel like he can't exist the way he wants to around me yeah, so same thing with and to be someone else for that exactly. that is exhausting and that's why mm-hmm. people are tired and yeah. the way you said mm-hmm. you're sad all the time yeah. it's just you're you're pretending to be yeah. someone who's not you because mm-hmm. you're scared if you're yeah. yourself yeah. people are not going to like you like, like go get dick for yourself <laughs> dude like come on man you, you go score for yourself dude come on yeah. show him your ass or some shit like that just come on <laughs> shoot your shot do, dude do what you guys it's do cool, man. And, and i and i and i really really like seeing that i like seeing people who who are so and he was so not confident like he was so mm. underconfident at that point and he was just okay yes okay cool and he yeah. came out and he's like Britney yeah. bitch <laughs> now he's just like that he's just <laughs> yeah yeah and to be honest he does he does he does himself up and he does all this makeup and he looks better than most women in pune like he just he just does <laughs> it's a sad truth but he does yeah. but yeah 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 man that's and i see i take inspiration from people like that like i see people just owning who the fuck they are and if if you if they can own who they are battling society and battling all these bigger bigger fights yeah. why can't you stop battling yourself and yeah. actually go and fight this fight for yourself literally yeah right but man i can't imagine like stepping into the ring and you're just mm-hmm. like you're face to face with mm-hmm. someone the like, fighters are modern day gladiators like yeah, you're, essentially you, it's you're in a cage like yeah. it doesn't get more gladiator than mm-hmm. that you're in a cage you're ready to beat the shit out of someone yeah. and he's ready to beat the shit out of and that person's people sole cheering. purpose is to come beat you yeah, yeah for the past 6 months he's been thinking about knocking you the fuck out mm-hmm. and then you're going to go face that mm-hmm. have you ever seen like been in front of someone and be like man this guy is fucking scary Yeah so uh, I mean Ali and I we, sp- we spoke about this when Kevin and I did our vlog together mm. where I told him about this one fight that I had so I was in Goa and uh, I was in Goa holiday after a win yeah. at that point at underground fight nights so uh, I was in Goa I was you know I was holidaying with my family but I was still training like I never take time off from training training for me is a is a never ending mm. process so I knew some people in Goa that you know that 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 did help me train every day and I was I was waiting I was ready for a call I was waiting for somebody to call, like the underground fight night team to call me and tell me that you know you have a fight in June I knew something was coming up so I was yeah. training for it and they told me who I was fighting now this guy was a former four time national MMA champion former six time national kickboxing and wushu champion yeah. respectively this legend and legend. yeah he was pretty legit yeah. and you saw like you saw he was jack fucking muscular yeah. just just the works everything yeah. a fighter should be yeah right and i was like why the fuck are they matching him up with me at that yeah. point and i was just was a scared guy i was just like me, me really me had you why? had like fights before like yeah pop, yeah pop, pop. i was um so i hadn't had wars at that point i mm-hmm. just understood who i was so 2019 was a time where i was kind of figuring it out for myself where i started climbing up the ladder so up until that point i was losing i i was owned to and then i was one and two and it just it was it was a mess Then that in 2019 I fought my first nationals where I won I um I I I mean sorry I got a bronze medal so my my record went up by some I forgot how many fights I had to fight mm-hmm. also uh then I fought at underground fight nights a little later that year uh, in in April then April and then May I was holidaying with my family and I was good I was in a good place mentally happily I was very happy but then this set me off the deep end at that point yeah uh where he got the where, where I got the call and you know I they, I I researched who this guy was I was like what the fuck are they matching this guy up with me and I got scared I had a crazy panic attack at that point yeah. I didn't understand what was happening yeah. but again don't fight those feelings feel it yeah and this is where I figured it out this is one instance where I figured it out and I was in my hotel room my mom and my sister and my dad and all were swimming and they were having a nice time I said I'm going to my room for some time yeah and I just felt every possible feeling I possibly could Yeah. called up my coach I told him this is what it is i'm feeling nervous i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm bothering you right now no you're with your family but please talk to yeah. me for 5 minutes please just talk yeah. to me he spoke to me and he said you're not really scared of what this guy can do to you you're scared of what you can't do to him hmm. right you're scared of your shortcomings when yeah. you have none at this point yeah so i trained and trained and trained and trained my ass off and you know being in goa i ate a lot but also the 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 fucking the weather in goa is such where you're just kind of always in shape sweating all the time sweating and it kept me in shape best place in so, india by the way honestly goa, man just, honestly and i'm going to go yeah. live there i would i possibly can because yeah. the you know ak team ak that could be yeah, trained yeah, yeah. at so they're coming to goa then oh, the professional wow. team trials have applied for and i i i got i got the i got the call for the for the oh, trials wow. in october when is it october, october yeah. yeah so So I'm going for that. So I potentially can live and train in in Goa. That'll be huge. Yeah, World class fucking yeah. training, dude. Like yeah. it's 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 gonna be awesome. Hopefully, if I make it. Yeah. But yeah. So coming back to this, um, 
it was a very painful process of just understanding uh, understanding my own strengths at that point and i thought that i was going to wrestle him and i thought i was going to box with him and i thought it was going to be an absolute war because he was a power puncher and yeah. he's got so many knockouts and he's got this and he's got that okay all that said i was very nervous when fight night came it was by, by far my worst weight cut ever where my granddad literally had to hold my hand and help me on the scale and he had to help me off i almost fell down that you, know, you were like all dehydrated gone i was you, gone i was as gone as it gets you so, did the whole sweating and yeah yeah everything and i did that earlier today before coming also this okay. water is the first bit of anything that i've had today in my body so when do you have to make weight the fight day friday only. so now the system is where we have to make weight every day but this was the day before the fight that I had to make weight because it was a fight night okay so what i did was um the day of the weigh ins it was pretty gnarly but i was very i was all like okay chalo today i have to make weight then i could think about the fight after and i and i left no stone unturned in that in yeah. the, in that in that training camp where well, i did every round i i i i did every push up i did every squat i did every bit of um i did every bit of drilling that i could possibly do and then some yeah right i didn't leave any stone unturned at that yeah. point until failure basically yeah exactly and it's not even until failure i just did it till i had to do it till, till what my system said so i i don't work to failure ever because it's yeah. not a good thing to do for your yeah. body constantly redlining your body it's not a good thing we can talk about that yeah. after because i wanted to ask mm. you about like mm. working out and mm. yeah so let me just finish yeah, this and yeah. we talk about it but um so yeah fight night came around came around and i finally saw my opponent and i was like jesus christ this yeah. guy is uh, he's he's i i don't look like i belong in there with him yeah. and if you see the video also like i look like this little i i i don't look very muscular like even now i don't look very muscular yeah. but i'm not but i know how to fight and that's is what matters anyway, is sorry is the video yeah it's on instagram on your instagram yeah on my instagram yeah yeah i'll like pull it up so ha huh. yeah so i entered the cage and i looked at i looked across the cage and i was like yeah this guy's going to fucking murder me yeah. and they were doing the introductions and everything and the whole time i just I, i squatted down and i had my head down the whole you time you were looking at him i wasn't i wasn't because yeah. i knew if i looked at him i was going to overthink and that's yeah. not the time to overthink and this is when i blanked my brain out completely my entire strategy for that fight was don't throw a head kick because he's going to counter that and punch you cuz you knew yeah. that that was his yeah i knew that that was his specialty right so he i i said don't throw a head kick don't throw a head kick don't throw a head kick was the first fucking thing i do yeah. in the fight i threw a head kick <laughs> and it caught him oh and it and it rattled him like it, it it rattled him quite badly and i saw that he was hurt so i went in for the kill i threw a cross i threw a hook and he fell stood back up again i let him stand back up again i threw three upper cuts and he was out oh, 11 yeah. seconds and the fight was we'll, over we we'll watched the yeah you can just duplicate the yeah oh damn I don't know I'll put this down down the... a little bit down a little bit down 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 further 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 No I think we missed it go up a little bit cuz I knew I posted it recently on the 8th of June this one yeah that one Yeah That's from two angles so the video it's it's a reel No I think I've seen this Oh, that was that was the head the yeah. that was the first head kick. Yeah. That's it. Oh. The fight started and 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 it was done before it even started. He didn't throw a single punch. He didn't see it kick. coming. I, I don't think yeah. he did. Look at that. Oh. Oh my god. I'm the strongest person in the cage. Look at the referee you. that night, man. <laughs> I was just fucking ecstatic, dude. I was just ecstatic. I couldn't believe I had done that. I couldn't believe that it was over. So it was like a weight that was lifted off my shoulders at that point. I just thought okay fine I prepared 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 and it's just it's just feels like nothing. Is that the most satisfying thing as a oh, fighter? Oh fuck quick, yes. Quick fuck <laughs> yes. Quick win. I lost I was devastated after my after my uh, after my world championship loss. But you know one thing that made me really really happy was the fact that this weight was just lifted off of me and I could go eat food now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have to think about what I was not eating what I had to eat and all that. I was just I was very happy where I was. Yeah, I yeah. uh, sometimes I think like if a fighter gets in the ring and he's done in the first 5 seconds he's like man 6 months of training yeah for 5 seconds and then and sit man I mean yeah and then what's the Spider-Man obsession that you have <laughs> So <laughs> it's all your equipment it's all my equipment that, yeah So Spider-Man has also also has a bit of an underdog story so if you watch the first yeah. movie he got bullied quite a bit like Tobey Maguire in the first Spider-Man yeah. movie uh in the Sam Raimi uh Spider-Man saga he was um bullied quite a lot yeah and in lockdown last year so i've read every single spider-man comic since 
Oh wow! Yeah, so I've read Miles Morales, Miles Mor- Mor- Morales, Peter Parker. Do you have um, them or you've just? I've downloaded them. them. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not a comic collector or anything yeah. like that. But I just I I like reading it. I like yeah. doing that. You'd and love to have a collection. Though, Fuck like yes, I would if I could afford it. Yes, yeah, but it's still but fucking but, expensive. Yeah. They're very expensive, yeah. and I don't think it's worth it. But anyway, um, so his character is something that I really really resonated with, where he sort of came up and he sort of was silent and didn't tell anybody who he was mm-hmm. and didn't didn't tell anybody who what he did. But he slowly slowly inspired people, right? Yeah. And he was he was just this this silent hero where he just had to he just went around not letting bad things happen to anybody yeah. around him, right? He was he was everywhere and then he was nowhere. Yeah. Right. That's kind of what I resonated with quite a lot because I know what it's like to be nobody. I know yeah. what it's like to be bullied. I know what it's like to be stepped on. I know what it's like to be treated badly for who you are. And yeah. then once they figure out that you have the superpower, they kind of treat you a little better. Mm. Right? They see you and they respect you and they love you. Yeah. Right. And that's something that I really really liked. And last year in lockdown, my obsession became just a little more amplified because I was doing a lot of game testing for a different for for different different companies, okay. and um, I like I like video games. Yeah. So um, Spider Man was one of those games where I just tested and I gave the my feedback. The PlayStation one, right? Yeah, the PlayStation Four one. So the first Spider Man game, not yeah. the Miles Morales one that's come out now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was the first one to download the Miles Morales game as well when it came out. It came yeah. out two days after my birthday, so I was very happy. Yeah. So that was my birthday present last year, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So my uh, so I started playing that game and I saw the storyline and I saw everything and I was like, "Fuck!" There's so many things about this guy that I love so much. Yeah. Like he's just not he's not this person that runs through everybody. He's this person that gets fucked up and yeah. comes back and makes everything better for himself yeah. and his family and the people that he loves. And he's got three people that he talks to, like me. Yeah. I talk to three <laughs> people in my day. That's it. I don't I don't talk to more people than that. Yeah. Right, besides my family. Who's your favorite Spider-Man? Mm. Are you talking about in, in all these and all Maguire, these Tom oh Holland. Tom Holland and uh, Andrew Garfield? I yeah. don't like Andrew Garfield. You don't like him, so he was my least favorite Spider-Man. Mm. But Tobey Maguire is number one for me because he's just the OG. Yeah, and Tom Holland. So Stan Lee initially said that you know when when I was looking for for a person who was supposed to play the Spider-Man character, Tom Holland is the person that fit that bill. Yeah, but for me, I just like how Tobey Maguire conducted himself in those movies, and Tom Holland's too childish to be Spider-Man. Yeah. 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 So I kind of I I like Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland. I'm not even gonna rank Andrew Garfield because he was just I, a dick in that movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, he was just he was just going around punching random people, trying yeah. to find the guy that killed yeah. Uncle Ben, right? Yeah, yeah he was, was just a bully. In that, that was movie. that. It didn't fit like Andrew Garfield. I feel like and he's, he's too good looking for a yeah, to, to be Spider Man. That's exactly you're telling right. me. This guy, yeah. he's a photographer. Yeah. So I saw yeah. this meme. This yeah. it said Andrew Garfield <laughs> yeah. was a photographer. He skateboarded yeah. to school, and you're telling me he didn't get any bitches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he yeah, he broke a fucking backboard. You didn't <laughs> think he b- broke any backs at that point? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I yeah, I like yeah. Andrew Garfield as an actor, though. I feel I like do, he's a really good actor, but it, he just didn't fit. He didn't fit the Spider-Man. And then Jamie right? Foxx was like yeah. super weird in that movie. He's mm-hmm. brilliant, but then he's, it was just he like he can do anything, man. Jamie yeah. Foxx, honestly, is playing Mike Tyson in the upcoming, uh, yeah. you know, in the, the best person yeah. to play him. Yeah, honestly, because that guy can do anything. Like he's played bad guys, good guys, dumb guys. Yeah. All uh, sorts of guys. Electro, he's played yeah. Electro in Spider Man. It's he's done everything and more. Yeah, in right? fucking Django, yeah. bro. That yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the best yeah. acting performances. You I've think so? Seen. Yeah, yeah. He was mm. really good in mm-hmm. that movie, and the movie itself yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Right? Even even in this one movie, like he made a sort of a side appearance in uh, um, Horrible Bosses. Oh yeah, motherfucker yeah, yeah, Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> he was just. He I, I, I loved bro. his character, man. I loved it. Mm-hmm. So even that, and then stand-up comedy, and I just I I I love watching people. So my favorite stand-up stand-up comedian ever is Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah, like from way back really in the day, good, he's just yeah. he was fucking awesome. Like, and he was 22 at the time, dude. He was my age when he was killing it. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of pushes you to be better in 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 any possible way that you can. Yeah, stand-up comedian is a for people like Eddie Murphy, mm-hmm. uh, Chris Rock. He just told experiences. He wasn't yeah. even trying to be funny. Yeah. He just told experiences in a funny way. Yeah. Kevin, I feel mm-hmm. like stand-up comedian is a very limiting word for these guys because they yeah. can do so much everything. More. Yeah, stand-up comedian is someone like I don't know Andrew Schultz. He's a stand-up oh, comedian. No, He's I think Andrew Schultz can do anything and more, dude. Andrew, yeah, Schultz, he can act yeah. for sure. Yeah, if, for sure. Um, if he will soon. Yeah. Andrew Schultz, I would never get into never get into an argument with that guy. That guy will tear me limb from limb. He'll fuck my. I'll be like, I'll be like, sorry, dude, sorry, you win, you win. Yeah. I, I won't, I won't, I won't argue with his, you ever. His online presence is something else. Like everything yeah. that. He is is because of this online. He's also yeah. one of those guys who's a genius. Like yeah, everything that he so does, smart, everything yeah. that he posts, <laughs> does like so much conscious yeah. 
I've heard that goes behind, and mm. he's very naturally funny. Also, and he's not afraid to say what he's feeling. Yeah. That's what I love about him, and that's what I don't like about like today, like, like the, the world today. Everybody's so afraid to say something. Yeah. Everybody's so afraid to be judged. That's why we have this podcast judged. where you get yeah. to talk yeah. whatever you want. Untriggered, I fucking good. love that, yeah. man. Un- untriggered, I fucking I I love the Ooh, I love the title. Yeah, so Loved we it. we were thinking about names when mm-hmm. I started to do it, and I was like, okay, what are we going to be talking mm-hmm. about? Mm-hmm. And I knew it's always going to be super unfiltered. I'm yeah. going to talk, and then I was like, I'm probably going to trigger a mm. lot of people. So I was like, you <laughs> might as well trigger. Yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah. It's kind of fun to trigger people and see how they react. Also, at, at to some extent, but 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 not be an asshole about uh-huh, it. But that's uh, what I was going yeah, to say. not be a dick about it, but just see what happens. You know, like at, at one point in my life, I was like, yeah, fuck it, say it, see what happens. Yeah. Just, but I would I wouldn't say something hurtful or disrespectful. I just give my opinion on something. If somebody got yeah. hurt in that, I'm sorry. Just keep scrolling, right? If if I yeah. post something funny, I genuinely think it's funny. Yeah. It's a dark joke. It's a gay joke. It's yeah. a you know it's a lesbian joke. It's whatever. Yeah. It's the the idea behind that is not malice. The idea behind that is not to suppress anybody. Yeah. I have so I have gay laugh. friends. I have people that. I have people that I and I love them quite dearly. It's not like it's not it's not like I have anything against the yeah. way they are. It's just I it's just fucking funny. Like if yeah. they make a if they if they make a joke about a straight guy in a relationship, it's yeah. fucking funny. Yeah. Right. They make a joke about a woman being crazy. It's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you're disrespecting it's anybody. It's not like you're taking I'm, anything away from them. The thing with yeah. stuff online, jokes online mm-hmm. is the fact that you're scrolling and you don't know what to expect and it suddenly mm. hits you that just makes it so much funnier <laughs> I, i feel people yeah. don't realize this yeah. because if you're the same joke if a stand up comedian pro- mm. performs it you may not laugh at it as mm-hmm. much cuz you ex- you're expecting jokes mm-hmm. and those jokes have to be really good to make yeah. you laugh yeah. but when you're scrolling like aimlessly <laughs> yeah. there's just shit that is so uh, wrong but it, it's yeah, out it just of feels nowhere. so good yeah like even with your own thoughts man like yeah. sometimes you're sitting and yeah. you think of something which is you know it's very wrong and you know i don't believe <laughs> this but it's just funny because it's out yeah. of nowhere it's yeah it is and you don't necessarily ha- believe that life is that way but the yeah. fucking joke man yeah. if it makes you laugh it makes you laugh don't yeah. don't have to not let people laugh and this is yeah. what the social justice social justice warriors yeah. do is that they try to control everybody's uh, speech by controlling yeah. everybody's fucking speech yeah Exactly. Right. They, they they say freedom of speech, freedom of speech, and then they say, "Oh no, you can't say this. Yeah. You can't say that. Oh no, this word triggers me. That word triggers me. You can't. You can't. You you can't make a fat joke. You can't do this." I'm like, freedom of speech as long as I like it. It's exactly. Like that. Yeah. It's as long as it's convenient to my yeah. feelings. Yeah. Well, but most of these people also online. It's just that they they have like it's rec- recreation for them. It's yeah. like fun to be that person online. Yeah. A lot of these guys, you speak to them in person in their own circles. They make the same jokes. Yeah. They they laugh at the mm-hmm. same. So many times with people, I've mm-hmm. cracked a joke and they've laughed and they're like, "Man, you can't say that." <laughs> <laughs> like, why do you laugh them for what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's yeah. I don't know I I really really like I really like people that you can joke about anything with anything yeah. and everything with and it's not mm-hmm. uh, it's not it's not a bad thing to laugh at something that's not supposed to be laughed at it's just yeah. keep it to yourself if you want to laugh at it don't there's no time for yeah. everything yeah, yeah exactly like if like yeah. if someone's someone passed away and then uh, you can't make a joke that but yeah. maybe in a few years mm-hmm. like I have friends now who mm-hmm. talk about horrible things that yeah. have happened to them but they mm-hmm. make jokes about yeah, it and like we make jokes about mm-hmm. it it's also a way of dealing with those things it's like i've made yeah. my peace so i i'm so at peace with this that i can laugh at it now. i'm so glad you said that because uh, one of my cousins who got diagnosed with breast cancer at one point mm-hmm. and it's the most horrible thing that can happen yeah. to a, to a person and the family also feels it but yeah. it's also very sad that the person's There's going through it right yeah illness. exactly and she's 23 when she got diagnosed with it so it was very hard on her and everybody but especially her This was six years ago. Today she's cancer-free, mm. living her best life, and at that point everything fell apart from her. Uh, yeah. f- fell apart for her. She was supposed to get married. She was engaged to get married. That motherfucker mm. ran and left when you know he, yeah. he he knew that she had breast cancer. Got married a month or two later, and that girl is so fucking strong, dude. Honestly, she with her chemo, haircut, and everything, mm. and she she went to the guy's wedding. She went to she went to his wedding to congratulate him. Oh, wow. Yeah, she went. She hugged him. She hugged his wife. Congratulations. She had a nice yeah. time at the wedding. Yeah. 